Hello, this is Jeff Yarger, and I'm going to be giving you a quick tutorial today on uh, reading ASCII and or text files into Kaleidograph. So, the data I'm going to use can be found at my public website, yargersci.com, under Downloads, and it's the two zip files, the practice data zip and the chloroform and acetone nmrdata.zip. If you're in my Chemistry 343 Physical Chemistry Lab class, you can go to ASU's Blackboard site. You can download the NMR data under Content Laboratory Experiment Material Number 1 under the Example Data, and the Practice Data is under Example Data Set right there. So once you've downloaded them both, you should be able to unzip them. If you're not familiar with unzip, I recommend howtounzipfiles.com as a place to understand what zip files are and how to uh, unzip them uh, properly. If you're on a Macintosh, you should just be able to double click the zip file or when it downloads it automatically unzips it, makes a directory and uncompresses those files. In the practiced underscore data there are three files and in the NMR data set there's eight files of NMR spectra. We're going to go through each and how we're going to do this in Kaleidograph is pretty similar to Excel and other type of programs like Origin and Sigma Plot. So let's get started immediately. Um, if we open Kaleidograph, and I'm using Kaleidograph 4.1 for a Macintosh. Kaleidograph also works for a PC. Um, and what I'm showing you today works on older versions of Kaleidograph 3. If you go to open and to your, where your data is, I put it on the desktop in these directories. We're going to start with the practice data. Now I have access to uh, the three data sets, especially if I enable all documents here. Uh, if I do all readable documents, it, not, it doesn't recognize the dot dot file. So in there I can select any of these data sets and I'm going to go through each quickly. So if I select the simple dot dot, it pulls up a text file and it pulls it up with my last set. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset this to where it's not skipping any lines and everything's kind of to its default here. These circles do represent tabs, so it is tab delimited. That's what the character or the whatever is used to separate the numbers from each other. There's one tab in between each one. I don't need to skip any lines of text because there's no header. And the first line or the first row is the titles, so I'm going to read those in as the titles. And when I do, it reads those in as the column titles, and I have those numbers, and now it's read in so that I could go, for example, and plot a scatter plot of time versus temperature. I have the data there now, and I could even do something like a linear curve fit, you know, to the data and do things formatting wise, for example, make this where it's more readable, say in an 18 size font, um, a little closer, and the same with this size, etc. So now it's more in a format that you could read it, and you can easily export this, save graph as something like TIFF or JPEG, etc., something you can read into Word, um, etc. So I'm going to close that now move on to the second set of data. So again, go to Kaleidograph. We're not going to double click on the data. That opens by default a text editor um, uh, for this. We want to read it into Kaleidograph. And so the next one I'm going to do is this weighted data fit. And again, it has the same thing. It's tabbed eliminated, one tab in between each one. There's no lines to be skipped because there's no header. The first one is X values, Y values, error. That is the, the titles. And again, it reads it in. When you're plotting this, now we have error in Y as well as X and Y, so we can plot X values versus Y values, and we can go ahead and add under plot error bars Y values, and we can tell it that the column is the error in Y value, and it will now, as vertical lines, add that error plus or minus into each one of those. And again, we could go and, and add larger text and, and manipulate that. Okay, that's two out of the three sets. Let's quickly look at the third one, and that's temperature, pressure, gas data. And now we'll see that it doesn't start with just uh, the titles and numbers. I'm going to have to skip some lines here. And so the nice thing is it has a preview window right here where I can see, you know, what's showing. So I can just keep adding a line to skip here until I run into the numbers. And right there is where I run into 
the column titles. And so I can read those titles in and then read numbers. Now, if I leave it as one right here for the tab delimination, you can see I'm going to run into problems because there's two in between that. There's two there, but then there's three, three, etc. In other words, they're not evenly spaced with delimiters. So I need to say one or greater than one. When I do that, it reads the data in appropriately. And again, it's a set of temperature with three different sets of sample pressure data and error in each of those. And again, just to quickly show you, you can plot the temperature in X against each of the pressures. And you, you can even fit all three of them. There, and you could add the error bars, etc. I'm not going to bother doing that right now. Okay, so that's the first set of data. Three kind of easy examples. Now the next one I want to show you, which is very relevant to people in Chemistry 341 this semester, because we're going to be looking at several NMR data sets. And so this NMR data right here is chloroform in deuterated acetone at several different gradient strengths using a pulse field gradient spin echo NMR experiment which I describe in other podcasts. Um, what we're going to do specifically here, we'll first look at the file, read it in, and see how you would generally handle it. So this one I am just going to quickly open in a text editor, and by default it uses text edit on a Mac. It would use WordPad or uh, Notepad on a PC. And you can see the header gives you some important information, and there's just one column of numbers. This is pretty common in NMR data. This specifically is Bruker, top spin NMR data um, that was collected you know a couple years ago it gives you the leftmost data point the right and the number of data points so you can generate your own x-axis which is chemical shift in part per million which is the common NMR x-axis and what it's giving you here are the intensities of you know uh, for that spectral or in other words the y-axis of data why didn't it give you both because it would have doubled the size of the file when they could have just given you a short header where you can generate it yourself this is pretty common in NMR uh, data and this is how Bruker saves ASCII data by default when you're in topspin so we have eight of these files at, at different gradients and by watching how the amplitude of these peaks decrease um, with gradient strength, you can determine the diffusion coefficient. And um, that's what is one of the exercises in Physical Chemistry Lab 343 at, at Arizona State University. What we're going to focus on here is just being able to open the data and, and be able to plot it. So again, let's go to Kaleidograph. Let's move from the practice data back to our desktop and find the NMR data right here. Let's just start with 2% gradient, and these are 2, 15, 29% gradient, etc. We'll open that data set. Now, again, it's pulling up the last parameters. I want to, I don't need to skip data at the moment. I want to just kind of set it back to the defaults and see what I'm dealing with here. So I do want to skip some lines, and it's nice to have this preview here to show you it. And I want to skip until I see the numbers. Now, you'll see that this first, right before the numbers, isn't a title. So there's no reason to read titles. I can skip lines till I hit the first data point. There's, it doesn't even matter the delimiter or number because there's only one set of data here. And so now I open that and I'm going to quickly, before I forget, remind myself that this is the 2% gradient NMR data. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do now is on this spreadsheet, go ahead and insert a bunch of columns here. And the reason I'm going to do this is I really want all of the data to be on one spreadsheet. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert a whole bunch of columns here. Um, not even worry about the label at the moment. It only gives you a couple to start with. And you're going to see like, so when I read the next one, which is the 15%, it's going to open it in a different one and it has all, you can check, see it has all the same parameters now. Uh, it uses the same header and I can just command C for copy, go over to where the other one is and command V to paste it and this is the 15% gradient. And as you could tell, I could keep doing this and I'm just going to close this one now because I don't need it. I could keep opening each one of these files individually, copying them, going over to this one, pasting it in, closing 
the one that opened, and then this is the 29% gradient. And I could do this for all eight of the spectra and have all of my y-axis. I'm not going to bother doing the rest of them here. I think you get the point. Um, but what I am going to do is, and I'm going to go ahead and just for close that last data set, I am going to show us how we would generate an x-axis of data. So right now I can't plot it, I only have the intensity. So again, let's just open one of the data sets. It doesn't matter which one, they're all the same. The header on these, these were all run under the same conditions. So the header for one is basically the header for all of them. Uh, and what it's really going to give us is what's important is this information right here that um, gives us how to generate an x-axis. So the easiest way to do it is select a blank column, go to functions, create a series. And specifically what I want to do is make a series that starts its initial value at the far left point. It ends at a specific value. This is the far right point. So I'm going to give it a final value here. And the increment is the amount of data in between each point. Well, we need to, in a sense, calculate that. What it is, and I'm just pcalc is a, a free program for calculating. Uh, on a Mac, you can use a calc any calculator. I need the difference between the furthest data point, which is this one, uh, and the rightmost. So if I subtract those two numbers, it gives me the overall range, you know, which is 9.5. Uh, um, and then if I divide by Thirty-two, 32k here, this gives me the increment or the the increment between each data point, right? And so now I can add that in that information. And you'll see it's basically entered here already. I'll go ahead and 020409, right? And so that's that number. And the reason there's a minus in front of it, very important, is, is that this is NMR data is plotted very unusually. It's plotted from highest to lowest number, right? So it's not plotted from lowest to highest, which is common. And so the foremost left point is nine, but then it increments down. So I have to increment by a negative value. Once I do that, it adds those data points. And so now I have all those data points here. And you'll see that um, I want to make sure they're the exact same length, and you'll see it missed it by one. I'm just going to delete that, but it, you know, uh, so that they're all the same length. And I can say that this is now the chemical shift in parts per million. Um, and I'll make that where I can see the whole title. Ah, so now I can easily plot the x-axis versus, and I could plot all three of these. Spectra, make a new plot, and you know, uh, often we only want to look at the lines. We don't really want markers at all. Um, I'm just going to make the marker something that basically goes away here. Okay, and now you can see we can see our spectrum. It's plotted in the reverse order of most NMR. If you double click the axis here, you can reverse axis and this is plotted how typical NMR is where here's your chloroform peak over on this side here's your acetone peak over here and you can even highlight in if you want to um, you know zoom in and and really see that this acetone peak is a pentet because it's the D5 impurity of acetone in D6 acetone that you're looking at there. And you can double click to go back to the full spectra. The other thing you can easily see when you're looking at this is, is that, um, that as you go up in gradient, the peak height and or area decreases. So we could plot this, you know, versus the gradient to, to get an an idea of, of what the diffusion coefficient is. I'm going to quickly close that and I think that gives you a first quick example of how to use Kaleidograph for importing ASCII data and doing some simple plotting. Hope this helps.